Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chimmy. I make videos every week. Now, my videos every week are usually very different. They're not the same at all. However, the ultimate goal is to add value to you. Today, I wanted to talk about YouTube 101. If you've ever been interested in starting a YouTube channel but you didn't really know where to start, this is your best place. There are quite a lot that I want to talk about, so I've divided it into four different categories. These are the absolute basics that you must know if you want to start a YouTube channel. I've divided into four different parts because there's too much to cover and I won't be able to do it in one video without you getting bored. The first part will be about email ID. The second one will be about equipment that you need. The third one will be editing. I use Final Cut Pro, so this is going to be about Final Cut Pro. And the fourth one will be your YouTube content, calendar planning. I've split it into four parts so it's easier for you to follow and cope up. And this is all I'm going to talk about in each week. So if you miss one part, you can go back or you can go forward and look at the other one. These are not full-blown teaching at all. It's not A to Z on how to edit or A to Z on equipment and how to use each and every one of those equipments or how to use an app entirely for YouTube content planning. It's just my experience. It's things that I have learned the hard way. I find that there are a lot of guides for you on YouTube itself and on Google on how to start a YouTube channel, but sometimes people don't really talk about these basics. So I've learned it the hard way and I want to make it easy for you, so I'm sharing it with you now. These are tips and tricks that you won't find anywhere else at all. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out every other week or every other part that I upload. Even when I make recommendations for something, I will leave the link to everything on the description box below so it's easier for you to find it. In this video, I'll be talking about some tips and tricks on editing with Final Cut Pro. This isn't a step-by-step -step guide on how to use Final Cut Pro at all. This is just tips that I've learned along the way that I haven't found anyone else talk about. Now, when I first started using Final Cut Pro, I have a history behind it. The very first video that I uploaded, I gave it to Lakshman. Literally, I gave it to Lakshman to edit it. And he did it either with Final Cut Pro or iMovies. I'm not sure what he used, but I sat and recorded and I gave it to him and I said, okay, please edit it for me and then I'll upload it. The second video that I did, it was on wardrobe organization. I'll leave a link to it. I recorded that video and I edited that on Final Cut Pro for the first time by myself. I made so many mistakes. That video was probably only 10 minutes but it took me 5 to 6 hours to edit it because I was doing it the difficult way or rather the wrong way. So it took me way longer than it normally should. I was then looking at some tips on YouTube. I was trying to learn it from YouTube itself but that didn't work. And then eventually I found a class that was happening on Skillshare itself. I found this from a YouTuber called Ali Abdal. He was promoting his own Skillshare classes on YouTube on the video that I was looking at. So I wanted to give it a go and I just signed up for it and I had a two weeks trial period for it. This class that he did for Final Cut Pro itself was 3 hours. It was really, really good. When I was going through that, I figured out so many mistakes that I was making and I figured out how it took that long. In fact, I actually got worried when it took me 5-6 to six hours to edit one 10 minute video the first time and I thought, I haven't got this much time to edit any other videos for this long every week. But then, yeah, it doesn't actually take that long at all if you do it correctly. So I would highly recommend that you do a class. The ones on Skillshare, I find, are far more professional than the ones on YouTube. Although the ones on YouTube is quite good, it's not as organized and as systematic as it is on Skillshare. So I would highly recommend that you do a class on Final Cut Pro first and foremost on how to use it. You can't learn Final Cut Pro by trial and error. There is far too many things in there for you to learn and understand. There's so many shortcuts that you could do which will not show up on its own at all. So do a class first, do a lesson first, and then the rest that I'm talking about in the video is some of the tips and tricks that I have learned. The lighting is not my friend at all today. It's just going in and out, in and out, in and out. And I hope you don't get a headache seeing the changes in the lighting. There are five tips that I want to talk you through on Final Cut Pro today. The first one, one library for one project. Number two, when importing, keep the files in the original location, not make a copy. Number three, delete rendered files to save space. Number four, how to link the files to the original sources if you've moved it and you've lost it on Final Cut Pro. And the fifth one is the exporting format. When you open Final Cut Pro for the first time, 
It will give you an option to open an existing library or to open a new library. Always open a new library for each video that you want to do. The purpose of individual library is so you can gather all of your videos, all of your original files and sources in one location itself. When you do one project in one library, it makes life far more easier for you to organize everything so you can find it easily in the future. It's easier for you to segregate everything. When you're looking for something, you can label everything accordingly. Even when you want to move your library out from your hard disk into an external hard disk, it's easier to do it when you only have one project on it. Let's say you have five different projects in one library. You've got everything jumbled up together. You have so many videos, all of your formats, all of your original videos and everything is in the same place. It just gets really, really messy to find everything. So remember this, one library for one project. That's it. If you wanted to do a short promotional video, then you can open another project under the same library that is. So you have one for your main YouTube itself, another one for Instagram if you wanted to, and make that a shorter video and take bits and pieces from the original thing itself. When importing your files into Final Cut Pro, change the setting that you keep the files in the original location. You're not copying everything. If you copy it, you're duplicating the entire file. Let's say you have 10 GB worth of raw videos and you're making a copy in Final Cut Pro, you've got 20 GB of videos now. That's just so much extra space and it's not worth it at all. If you go into preference in Final Cut Pro and change the setting that it saves it to its original location each and every time, that's the settings that you will have every time so you don't have to remember to do this each time you're importing. Just change it in preference. When I started editing videos and storing it, I noticed that it was taking up so much space, even despite not making a copy of the raw files in Final Cut Pro. So I was leaving everything in its original location, but the final video itself somehow was far, far larger than I expected it to be. I didn't understand why it was this huge when it shouldn't be at all. And then I figured out, you know when you're editing a video, every time you're editing something, every time you're making a certain change in one section of it, you see tiny dots in the timeline itself. Those dots are indicating that your video is rendering in the background. So what it's actually doing, what Final Cut Pro is actually doing, is that it is saving everything on top of each other. So everything that you have on that, on your timeline, and then any other changes that you make on top of that is another change on top of it. That kind of doubles up the space on its own. So if your video on your timeline was about 2 GB, you make some sort of changes, it becomes 2.5 GB. And then it becomes 2.8, and then it becomes 3, it becomes 4, and it kind of doubles up after that. So by the end of it, you've got hundreds of GB worth of stuff when it shouldn't be that much at all because it's saving things that it doesn't need to keep in the background. You can delete all of these things to free up some more space. Let me show you my screenshot of how I do it. When I first started recording YouTube videos, the very first mistake I did was to um, create several different projects for different videos under the same library. I didn't know that you needed to do one library for one project and then you transfer it from place to place if we wanted to so you can move everything. What I did was, I made a few different mistakes but what I want to show you now is with this untitled um, library here, it's taken up 160 GB because it's got several projects in there and it's got a duplicate copy of the entire video itself and I'm going to show you how to reduce that size. That's not the actual size of all of the videos put together, it's just multiplied several times. So all you need to do is open that and then these are all of the projects in there. Go to File, Delete gener um, Generator Library and then Delete Rendered Files and All. You don't need copies of the rendered files, it's already rendered everything so that's fine. So delete that and we're just going to wait until that's done. If it is, close it. And go back that's already reduced it that's removed about 56 gb from there you know how i was talking about saving my videos in one place and then moving it to another place for housekeeping and everything so when i'm editing the video i put all of my files in my hard disk itself as in in my laptop itself because i don't want any external things if i'm sitting on the couch or if i'm sitting in the bed i just want my laptop and i don't want to be dragging everything else like an external hard disk just because the video is now editing from the original location. So I put everything on my desktop. 
and then I edit it from there. Once I've finished doing the entire video, export it, upload it to YouTube and everything, I move it onto my external hard disk so that I can free up space on my MacBook. When I move these files to the external hard disk, you can imagine what would happen to the original file in Final Cut Pro. Remember how we've saved it to the original location and not made a copy into Final Cut Pro? When you move it from your MacBook onto an external hard disk or a different location, Final Cut Pro will no longer be able to find it. It won't know where it is. So when you open that file again, if you want to go in and edit it or you want to take certain excerpts from it, you won't be able to find it. This is what you're going to see on that. It's going to show missing files. I'll show you how to relink your files once you've moved it to a different location so that you're able to find it on Final Cut Pro again. finished editing your entire video and you're happy with it and you're ready to now export your video, there are quite a lot of different formats to do this. If you want to save space in your hard disk, there are a few steps that you can follow and there are a few options that you can export it as. Let's say for example I'm ready to export this video, all you need to do is click on this button here and then you can either export it as master file or Apple Devices 10 ETP. I'll show you the difference between both. If you click on master file, this is a size that it's going to export it as 1.22 GB. If you use recording equipment that gives you extremely high quality video, then you can save it as master file. Just go into settings and this is the best option, H264. This is what you need to use when you're recording and make sure this is video and audio. You can change all of these settings in your preference so that it's permanently that option. So you could either do that. Remember, the one which says master file, H264, is 1.22 GB. Now let me show you the other one. If you're downloading it as Apple Devices 1080p, look at how much space it takes. It's only 620 MB. It's far lesser than the original master file itself, but it doesn't really compress the quality. This is good enough for YouTube and this will play in 1080p on YouTube. So it's literally HD quality that you will get on YouTube. And these settings again, I have it permanently done on my preference option. So it's H264 better quality and then just click on next and that will start exporting it. Select wherever you want to put it and however you want to label it and then save and then I'll export. I'm just not ready to export this um, at the moment so I'm not going to export it. That's all you need to do. I hope you found this information useful. I just want to tell you one piece of advice though before I finish. Don't be too hard on yourself. If your first video is so good that you have nothing else to improve, you've waited far too long. Just give it a go. Try something. Take a first step, try it, and then you can improve yourself. All the very best to you, and I'll see you again soon.